It's been some time since I updated the Synchron list and I know a lot of you have been anxiously waiting for my list because I really want to make a viable one. That's the goal. That's the objective, right? We want to make sure that we play our favorite deck and try to do it justice. Otherwise, it's like, what's the point, right? It's just a casual gameplay. With that in mind, I've seen a lot of builds. I've seen a lot of combos utilizing the new cards. But when you take that approach, you present a lot of inconsistencies that you just lose to your debt yourself. You, and that's not what we should be doing. We want to be able to synchro summon speeder as consistently as possible and be versatile enough, even if speeder gets negated, right? The moment you start adding all these other synchrons or all these other situational cards, you take away from that. Everything is revolving around speeder resolving. If speeder does not resolve, those cards you added to make the speeder ceiling higher don't even matter. That's kind of why I try to avoid that. Keep the fundamentals of the deck intact while trying to keep it as competitive as possible. Anyways, let's get straight into it. So let's go triple starter synchro. Okay, this should not change anytime soon. Same thing with Junk Synchron. These are like your main six that you should always play. The only time this is going to be bumped down is when Revolution Synchron comes out. Because you can play one. If you play one, and a lot, <laughs> a lot of the times, you're going to have this and Converter. If you use this and Converter effect to search for Synchron, you can search for the second one. You only play one. So at the very minimum, you need two at the very least. The third one is where the new Revolution Synchron will come in. It'll replace the level because because you still need to summon a level three. We'll summon one jet, two assault synchron, three revolution synchron, four star synchron, and maybe the five, depending on how we see it. Like uh, it's it's still up in the air. We're still debating on it. If you're not in a Wolfcon Discord, go and check it out. We discuss it and see how to optimize the list as much as we can. But for now, this is the standard. And then of course you have some of the best level twos that the deck has: Jun Converter, and of course. Double Warrior. This card's insane. This will overtake. This is what gives your deck a bit of resiliency. If they interact with convert with a junk first, right? Assuming you pitch these two. This is engraved. This is engraved. You summon the junk. They imprim this or they value this. Okay, that's fine. Tribute this. Tribute this one. Special search illumination. Chain this. Summon, right? And then you you activate illumination. Sending trail. You you activate illumination. Second effect. Reduce by one. And then that's speeder there regardless. Or if you feel like you can play around another hand trap and you have enough gas to continue with like a little overtake, then you make Excel and then you insulate speeder with a, with a, with a Herald line. You know what I mean? Like there's, there's pretty cool things you can do with it, which is why Doppel is insane. It doesn't force you to go straight into speeder, whereas this one does. I'll show you the combos later for those of you guys that are new, but for the ones that are already aware of the deck, you guys are well aware of what I'm talking about. A list where I tried without this because... You can take this away, right? That's one less situational card that you have to fulfill, right? Because you need to fulfill that card. It needs to be, have establishment. So if you take that away, right? And you you and you just focus on this. It lowers the ceiling. It becomes more efficient, but that's exactly the thing. It lowers the ceiling too much where it's super fragile. So you kind of have to compromise and add this situational card, right? So you you can you but you want to minimize on on situational cards because. It's kind of hard to top this because what this provides is it's, it's just too good to just not play. And then of course you have your one ups the cards you, <clears throat> the cards that hire your ceiling, but are quite necessary. Post and Bureau plays, it makes your non doppel hands better because when you don't have the uh, level ones, it makes your sequencing very simplistic and you can't really be clever. You can't synchro climb, you can't do much. So those level ones are super crucial because then it gives you shaman lines, um, marcher lines to provide tuners. And yeah, so that's basically been to be something. Whenever you don't open up this, this comes in handy when you open up with any any level two, which is uh, quite necessary. It sucks that we draw into it majority of the time. If you've been watching the streams, we've been drawing this like crazy, like almost every single hand. But like, it's, it's like a love and hate relationship. You know, it's just... You have to play it. It's just, you, know, it's not, you just have to. Um, <clears throat> there might be a time where we don't, but like as of now, I think it's just too good. It just it's just too good. Um, Sora's Trail, it's in there because of the Stardust Synchron Illumination. You know, it's so cool because you can summon her from the deck now with the Illumination. The moment you summon Excel, 
uh, Stinker Shortest Dragon, which is which is really nice. And then of course we play Carrier. This was always like eh, like up in the air a lot of the times because you could play it, but the only reason you do play it is because of the new spell on your market set too. That's the only reason he's in here because that spell increases the deck's consistency dramatically. And that's what allows us to play a lot of non-engine because typically we can't play non-engine. What non-engine am I referring to? Interaction cards, like hand traps. We, we, just, we just couldn't because it, it, it would just make the deck super inconsistent. But now that we have that spell that can function as either or is insane. It's just so good because we, we have the tuners. We have the tuners. It's just the non-tuner axes that we were missing. And on your mark, it just provides that, which is super nice. This one, I think you have to play two. Initially, I was drawing too many copies of this because any hand where you have multiple start, multiple synchrons in hand, it's not a good sign, especially multiple junk. That's one of the worst hands you can possibly have. Having a blank card and then a card you can't really play unless you have converter. And then even then, this blank card does nothing for you. Like in hand, it does nothing. So I wanted to minimize that. So I played three and I kept drawing multiple. I was like, okay, I'm gonna try to avoid that. I don't want that to happen. I just needed something enough speeder and that's it. But there's a lot of the times where I either milled it or I opened it and I needed to, needed it to be on field so I can single it away, so I can search converters, so I can have a level two to, to summon back off, off Shaman. And that line kept occurring and it just, it was annoying that I only had one. I was like, oh my goodness, I, yeah, I, I, it has to be at, at least two. You have to at least play two, just for that reason. And it seems a bit insignificant at face value, but in gameplay, it comes up quite often. And maybe this one as well. I, I think I'm gonna bump this one up, up, up as well. There are times where you get interacted with. That, that's what Yu-Gi-Oh is, right? You initiate a play, they try, to, they try to counter, right? So there's always gonna be interactions unless there's those games where there's just no interaction, it's one-sided, but like that's, that's beside the point. The point is that it's meant to be interactive, right? They're gonna interact with you. You're not always going to resolve speeder. You're not always going to be, you know, so you're going to end on suboptimal boards. And the first trail was going to get banished because you, you would have synchro with it. And there's always going to be either a starters in deck, a starters in hand, or you're going to have a tuning in hand or a, a second starters in grave. And having a second trail allows the deck to have a bit of resiliency, a bit of, of a bit of a grind game, no matter how small it is, help you seal the, seal the game. Because what happens most of the time is that you have Shaman Engrave, you have a, a, a Jet Engrave, and then you would like tribute the Omega that came back, because obviously you make Omega rip and, and try to return the trail, but sometimes you don't want to wait and return the trail, because like you don't want to do like, like a Lava Golem or something, or some, something weird, like get, get it on the field, get it stuck on the field. So you snipe right away, right? Because you it's, it's basically an Omni, a card for a card. And then it'll come back the following turn. It ensures that you, you get a card back the following turn. And then you'll have Stardust Engrave, tribute the Omega, Omega will will then uh, recycle a synchro or, or something, you know, and then you can just trigger trail again and then give you a bit of a, a, bit, a bit of a grind that, that, that the deck wouldn't have if you just played the one. So uh, either this at two or three, I'm still gonna be testing it, but two, I think for sure. Three is debatable. And then of course, this plays hand traps. The only reason you play this is because of the, the, the new spell. The new spell, it's just insane. It allows us to play non-engine. And then of course, triple ash, because these are the main cards that we kind of fear. And I guess the most prevalent in the format, right? So triple Nibiru, triple S Blossom, triple Impermanence. This is more so for us, for cross out. And there is the off chance that it, it can be dead. If they can't play around it, this is so devastating. It just, it's just super devastating. And post game one is insane because the fact that you nib them and you put the token in attack mode and you just crash your nib and you evenly them, they're forced to keep the token. That's brutal. That's so devastating, dude. It's just insane. But yeah, most of the time you're gonna want to pair this with any other hand trap to, to ensure that this resolves, right? Because that's what Shinkron likes to do. Equalizes the playing field, right? Because it's it's certain. They've exerted their resources to try to establish a board to not let you play or they establish some sort of setup, especially with the builder board. That's, that's what I'm referring to. <laughs> and you nib them and then the game is simplified, which is what you like, because like this is what you chose to interact with your opponent. And then now, this cleared the way, this paved the way for you to just synchro. And th that's what you like, you know? Cause it's kind of weird if this is out of the equation, you'd be one for one with your opponent, which is not certainty that it will, you know, it'll simplify the game state. Sometimes it will, but you need equalizers like this that just straight up just says, okay, boom. And then of course you have your spells, man. We have nine now, nine searchers, which is insane. I mean, it's a bit more prone to, to draw, 
but if that becomes more prevalent then we just have to main deck gamma which is quite cool <laughs> triple overtake and the new addition on your mark get set duel <laughs> this is the reason why we can play so much non-engine because this can be either or so much tuner access the, th the thing that we were missing was non-tuner and it's not the fact that we can just play carriers because carrier is carrier this is any of them and you can't play one because you want to open this you don't play like the only time you would play one is if the deck is at 40 and you're just trying to have a filler card and, and only then okay fair but like <clears throat> if that's not the case you have to max it out because it does nothing if you late game draw it it does nothing you have to open this you have to and then of course you play uh you're playing cross out because this stops imperm stops nib because sometimes you have to like preemptively tribute for starter synchron and then you're like oh i'll do some nib he has a nib now you know whereas in your typical line you wouldn't lose it but in those situations this comes in handy and of course uh call by just call by <laughs> and of course you have uh rota illumination this is going to be bumped up as well uh foolish reborn and dusters these were filler cards because when i was siding i it felt kind of weird siding out these guys because it seemed counterintuitive that the reason why I play it on engine is because of this, and I was taking this out. So I was like, that's a big contradictory. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I need, I need cards to side out. So these are the side out cards that I was mainly doing out. These six, depending on this one, uh, if you go second, maybe it, it might be useful, but you take these out. And you kept these intact, so the decks consistently stayed intact. Uh, and then you can side out Nibiru, depending on the matchup. But yeah, that's that's the only reason I'm on 43. This is 43 cards, but these are mainly like the side out cards. But yeah, that's the main deck. Um, I'll go ahead and show you guys the side deck. The, the side deck is very subjective to your region or to your locals, uh, depending on uh, how it is. But like this is what I'm citing. Um, you play um, triple evenly. Uh, Lotus, because you want to snipe the golem or the sphere mode or, you know, just something. Uh, for cash, for cash or the Ibli lock. Um, go in second card just against backward X, you know. And then you're playing, of course, Triple Bistio. This is mainly for Despia. You can make the argument to play the multiple Magnema, but like you draw so much that you would want you would you need to have different names at all at all times, you know. And um, yeah, that's 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 like the main thing. Because <laughs> every time I had multiple Magnema, and I was like, I can only use one, which is kind of annoying. And I can hit one, but I need to hit another one, like one on his and one on my turn, and I couldn't do that. And I was I was yeah okay, I, I just max different names. Um, this comes up sometimes because. Um, you revive uh, your light or your dark with shaman, and you can use his effect and banish one of those two, which is pretty cool. And then I side deck the cubed pitch because it's just gonna happen a lot of the time where people don't know what your deck does. So a lot of the time is gonna go to them reading and trying to learn your cards on the fly, and that's gonna burn the clock quite fast. <laughs> so it's unfortunate that you have to resort to this, but like, what can you do? Like you just you have to account for it, you know? And then, of course, there's the extra deck. The extra deck is, like, what the deck revolves around. Uh, so, you play Shaman, uh, Mid Marcher, Herald, Excel, Speeder. There's an argument you can play two because of cash, but, like, I, I was trying it out without it. Because I tried it, I was trying it before. I was playing double Speeder. Um, but I wanted to see if I can function without it because the, that's what the hand traps are meant to be there for. It's to kind of prevent that from happening. And if it doesn't happen, then... You, you hope that you simplify the game set enough that you can sequence out something with the rest of your extra deck, you know? Uh, TG, Yazi, OG Stardust, the new Excel Synchro Stardust Dragon, which is insane. Um, your Omega, of course, your Crystal Wing, and then these are your two tens. Um, this is still debating. I'm not too sure if I'm going to keep this or not, but it's like the new the new combo lets you end on him. Uh, well, a setup of him. You end on this and 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 uh, and this, and you have uh, this and Herald and maybe a Baron, depending on how good your hand is. But you for sure end on this, and that makes the setup a bit more versatile because I guess, I guess if it's a trap deck or a backward deck, you negate anything, any monster effect that they might have. It's mainly just one, <laughs> and then they set are four or five, and then right before they end, you just chain the activate this and summon this, nuke their, their entire back row, which is insane. It is too brutal. But, yeah, like, I, I I don't know. I'm not too sure if I want to keep it like this. But, like, the extra deck needs some work for sure. I noticed that in locals. Like, it was just 
a lot of inconsistencies. I was like, oh, I can't do this. I don't have this. All oh, these. So it's like, I'm still in the process of, of fixing it. But as of right now, this is this is a good start. This is a good start. <laughs> but yeah, that's basically the deck list. Go ahead and try it out. And I'm sorry for taking so long. It's just that I really wanted to test it and see how everything functioned. And uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's gonna be it. Hopefully, you enjoyed the video. Like, subscribe if you haven't, and thanks for watching.